Over the past three years, I've spent every waking moment tracking my food. Quite simply, I was damn sick of it. So what happened when I stopped tracking and started living? I did a contest prep a couple of years back now, and this was with the goal of hitting the stage for the very first time. Now, this contest prep was exceptional. It was six months long in total, and I was still around eight weeks out from the show day. Things cracked. I was in a deficit for so long, I was overworked, fatigued, and there was no end in sight, with only one or two refeeds during that whole period of time. I hit the end of my tether, but I wasn't willing to let it all go to waste and absolutely ruin my rebound. No, I was going to do things the right way. What did that mean? more tracking. After spending six months obsessing over food choices, how much can I get in to those macros and calorie limits, the downside of if it fits your macros, I launched straight back into doing exactly the same. We were going to do a controlled rebound reverse diet. I was coached by Josh Bridgman at the time, and it was absolute golden progress. Now, granted, some people would say that I should have taken more advantage, bumped straight back up to previous high calories, and pushed the limits while I was in that rebound phase. But I hadn't gotten properly into contest shape. I was still a couple of weeks out condition-wise, and realistically, I think that a controlled approach was best for me, given the fact that I suffered from binge and food relationship issues during that prep, which eventually led to its failure. Well, I led to its failure. I'm not going to pass it off to some kind of mental health condition that I can't help, but I definitely developed some issues which I lacked control over. That's something we'll fix for next time, but the point remains, this was a sensitive time for me to be dealing with managing my food, and a controlled response was definitely the right way for me. It took me months to get back to my previous high weight, where people often rebound back up in the period of maybe four to eight weeks. And I saw amazing progress. My composition was significantly better every time I hit a previous weight that I'd been at before. The transformation pictures were ridiculous. I was building new muscle. I was in a really, really healthy place. And keeping on top of tracking calories was definitely vital to that. And not going off the rails, if you don't count 3,000 calorie cheat meals as going off the rails. They were in the plan. So it's technically okay. Fast forward, I'm 20 pounds heavier than my previous off season. Digestion has hit a wall. I have force fed myself through multiple different calorie targets to the point where calories are at 5,400 and they'd been so for over a month. My digestion had slowed. The idea of rice or chicken or pretty much anything, beef, salmon, it all made me repulsed. What did I do? Did I change my sources up? Well, yes, I tried. Things just weren't working and I settled for my last resort. I was at 226 pounds. Realistically, that's 15 pounds up on previous highs at a significantly better composition. I had gained a fuck ton of muscle. I'm happy with this. We've got one more blast left in the tank before I judge whether I compete in 2023 or not, which I'm hoping to, and I feel like resetting now and priming myself for that last blast is more important than squeezing an extra three pounds out of this one. So I backed off. I closed my fitness pal for the last time, and I got to work enjoying life. James Hollings had actually spoke about this on the Bodybuilding and Bollocks podcast recently, and I'm absolutely not comparing myself to James. That man is far deeper into the game. He was talking about how realistically after a certain amount of time, you roughly know how many calories is the right amount of calories. Calorie macro goals aren't always the best way to go, and sometimes a meal plan is better. But he said he's pretty much been freeballing it, and that's pretty much where I am or was. I knew what the right amount of calories felt like. I knew what maintenance felt like. I knew what roughly 4,500 to 5,000 calories looked like. I could do this, right? Well, the first thing that I noticed is that food selection went down the toilet for the first week or so. I was allowing myself to have more takeaways because I wasn't keeping on top of my meal timing and regular occurrences throughout the day, which meant that it would get to eight o'clock and I would be starving and I would be 2,000 calories short. So what do I do? I order a Domino's, I order a McDonald's. Delivery took half my paycheck and I realized something needed to change. And when you've been in a restricted state for a long period of time, you're likely going to then have a mental sort of rebound, uh, a mental fight back to this situation. You're going to really want to take advantage of that freedom and it's going to be difficult to resist temptation because you 
haven't had the framework to be able to actually give in for a good while. There's an accountability, even when you're coached by yourself and you're setting those goals, to hit those goals. When you remove those goals, it becomes a lot harder to quantify what's good and bad. And as long as the scale weight doesn't change, sometimes you can be lulled into a false sense of security. But my accountability to myself didn't let me carry this on. I knew that things had to change. So I went back and I stopped ordering and I made sure that I was eating more regularly. My food selection was still poorer than usual. I'd have more grains in my diet and yet digestion felt better. I would swap rice for pasta and yet I could eat more in terms of calories. Why is this? Well, the foods that are deemed as optimal aren't always going to be optimal for you. First of all, if you get a physical reaction, you know, a gag reflex when you think about eating something because you've eaten it so much, that's your body telling you something. You can make yourself allergic to chicken by eating too much. And I'm not saying that this is going to happen or this happened to me at all. But I feel like when your body pushes back on you that hard and yet you're able to eat something like pasta, what is optimal then? Making yourself a plate of 150 grams of rice and only finishing 50, or making yourself a bowl of 150 grams of carbs from pasta and being able to get it all down. So those small changes of sources, as long as they weren't like rice for frozen french fries, were absolutely fine. The other change that came was that fats increased. Now, when I wasn't tracking macros naturally, I did tend to lean more towards having calories as my goal and trying to hit a reasonable amount of protein. So that meant that some days I would add olive oil because I would know that my appetite was down or that I would bump things up by having an ice cream of an evening. I think the odd occasional snack is absolutely fine. Sometimes when you're feeling appetite is low, being able to get easy, quick calories in through stuff like olive oil is fine as long as that doesn't then lead to digestion issues on its own. As long as it's leading to a net improvement, then that's good in my book. But this won't be great for everyone. Some people will let them lead that back to having regular takeaways and just subbing whole meals and that's not what we're talking about we're talking about that little bit on the top putting a little bit of oil on your chicken and rice or having a little bit of full fat yogurt because you can't be asked to walk to the shop to get the zero percent stuff what happened with body weight now this was something that i didn't want to prioritize as long as i didn't drop down below the 225 226 mark i was happy ending my bulk here i could likely recomp a little bit and look better the same weight by the end of it given i had a few weeks left but weight was difficult to control i am not as deep in the game as james as i said i'm not going to be as accurate I was as accurate as I felt I could be, and I was prioritizing relaxing, not being a bodybuilder, and worrying about this stuff when we got back to the next blast. But still, it was infuriating slightly, looking at the scales and going, somehow I've jumped to 229, and that was close to my 230 that I originally wanted. Have I made a mistake? Should I go back to being regular? Now it drops back down to 226. You're like, oh, it's just a fluke. But then it stays there for a couple of days. And this was a cycle that I went through, and this is something which just shows the importance of programming now should you have some flexibility in that programming with the changes that i mentioned having more flexibility over food selection adding in a little bit more fats when needed or putting a little bit on top in the off season of easily digestible food well yeah maybe you should make those adjustments if that feels right to you you know as i said optimal is whatever you can do at the time and what you can do changes depends on how, how your body reacts but i still think a plan is absolutely vital and important in the setting of trying to achieve a goal at least in a competitive setting now, i think everyone needs to do it no if you're just a gym bro who's going for the fun of it i honestly don't think that tracking macros is always worth it I think it's worth it for a period of time at the start. For at least the first year, you should still track macros to get used to what food is, what it looks like, how many calories different things contain, what can get you the best bang for your buck, or what isn't worth it in a growth phase because it's going to screw with your digestion. And, you know, you have a record of all of this then. You can attribute things to changes that you make, and it allows you to be consistent and accountable. However, after that year period, you can start to introduce more flexibility back. I feel like as a bodybuilder, as somebody who has competitive aspirations, this was never going to be long lasting for me. I was always only going to do it for as long as it worked and it's not working for me mentally anymore. And this is a big thing as well. Being too rigorous for a period of three years straight, having no breaks was detrimental mentally for me. 
But because I have ambition, because I have drive and a goal in mind, going off the rails is only fun for a couple of weeks. If you are genuinely competitive, I think it is important to give yourself these breaks and listen to your body from time to time when you can afford to, like in an extended off season as I have. A lot of people don't give themselves that time. A lot of people don't have extended off seasons. They jump from short prep to short bulk and they go in cycles and just obliterate their body. Giving yourself this time is why I also advocate for a longer off season because you can afford to step back and give yourself time to recover, enjoy life and feel like a human again, which is something we don't often get to do. But it's not sustainable and should only be used as a holiday from bodybuilding. That's just my experience, it's not a recommendation, but I wanted to share it with you because it shows both the importance of rest, the importance of having the plan in the first place to rest from, and how vital accountability is to be able to track progress and guarantee it. How do you track macros? Do you do it on a macro basis, calorie basis, protein basis? Do you have a meal plan? I'm really interested because I feel like coaching is moving towards macro based from meal plans and there's still a strong divide. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.